You may have already seen a video on this channel that shows you how to do these cool animated transitions for your stream. If you haven't seen it, go click on the eye thing in the corner. We're going to revisit that video today because who doesn't like recycling old content, you know? If you're new, there's a plugin for OBS that allows you to do these cool animated sliding transitions, kind of like what you're looking at right now. Here's the thing. The plugin that we covered already in this channel is super janky and old and outdated. There's a new plugin that's way better and way smoother. In fact, here, check this out. Here's some footage of the first plugin that we've already looked at. And now compare that to how this new plugin looks. And you can just tell the animations are way more accurate and just way better looking. But not only does it look better, it also has way more options. So many options that I'm not even going to be able to cover it in this one video. So I'm going to have to make multiple videos on this. Would you expect me to just give away all my secrets in one video just like that? For this video, we're going to be doing three different animations that you can do for your stream. The first will be a basic transition where every source animates every time you switch scenes. The second will allow you to slide your webcam to different positions on the screen using either hotkeys or something like a stream deck. And then there's a third one. What was the third one again? That's it. That's the one. So have a seat, sit down. This is going to be a long one. What's up guys, it's Nutty. Do, do all of these things, right? So I feel better about my life. So animations, what are we gonna be needing? In the old video we did, we used a plugin called Motion Effect. We're not gonna be needing that at all anymore. So you can just get rid of that, you know, throw that in the trash like Kobe. Instead, we're gonna be using a newer plugin called Move Transition. Now you may have already heard of this because I talked about it in my last top five OBS plugins video. But like I said, I'm recycling content because I'm a scumbag YouTuber. Got him, boys. Reeled them in. The reason I'm covering this plugin again, apart from ad revenue, is because when I did that video, this plugin was back on version 1.0. We're on 1.7 now. There's so many different things that have changed with this plugin. Speaking of plugins, I have to do the whole thing where I tell you guys, no, Catherine, it doesn't work in Streamlabs OBS. I, one of these days, I just got to do an entire video for why I don't use Streamlabs OBS. So you guys keep asking me that, so... Probably going to do that pretty soon. I'm going to go ahead with the assumption that you already know how to install plugins. If you're new to plugins, then go click the last video I did and shows you briefly how to do that. So first animation, we're going to be doing the most basic thing, which I imagine is what 90% of people are going to be doing. We're going to be animating your scene transitions. So every time you switch scenes, all of your sources like your webcam, your game, they're all going to slide into position automatically. Now this may look complicated, but it's actually going to be the easiest thing that we do in this video. So all you need to do is go into your scene transitions. And if you can't see it, go into view docs and scene transitions. Then under scene transitions, you'll see a plus sign. Click that and you'll see a new option there called move. Please don't click the drop down because so many people message me. They click the drop down and they don't see move transition. They're like, dog, I don't see it. It's not working. You have to click the plus sign to add the transition first and then it'll appear in the drop down. After selecting move, a properties window will open up with a whole bunch of options there. I'm not going to go through all of the options, otherwise this video is going to be like 40 minutes long. However, what you will notice is that there are three main sections. So you have matched items, appearing items, and disappearing items. So these options are going to let you set how the animation appears. So let's say you're trying to switch from scene one to scene two. Matched items are going to be what happens to the sources that appear in both the first scene and the second scene. Appearing items are going to be what happens to sources that don't appear in the first scene, but do appear in the second scene. And then disappearing items is just the opposite of that. Normally what I like to do is I keep the matched item section just default but for the appearing and disappearing item sections what I like to do is I like to set the position to none and then the transition style to fade. But just go ahead and play around with the settings. You'll figure out what each of them does. If you press OK, then you can set the duration for the animation. I think the default is a little bit too fast, so I set it to 750 milliseconds. And then, yeah, you can just start switching scenes and everything should be working. Now, a couple things to note. Sometimes you'll notice that when you're switching between scenes, you might be expecting some elements like your webcam to animate, but then what actually happens is it kind of just shrinks and then it grows in the second scene. Kind of weird to explain, but when you see it, you'll know what I mean. This is happening to you. Make sure you've done a couple things. One, if your camera is in a group or a nested scene on one scene and not in a second scene, 
then the move transition plugin is not going to recognize them as matching scenes so it's not going to animate them and you also need to make sure that the positional alignment and the bounding box type for each source is the same between scenes if either of these things don't match up then move transition isn't going to animate them properly but other than that that's about it for animated scene transitions. It kind of just works automatically. Okay, so the second animation we're going to be looking at is the sliding animation. So the way that this one works is we're going to have some set of predefined positions for our webcam. And then we're going to use like a hotkey, like a stream deck to move our webcam to different positions on the screen. One of the things I hate is like when someone is playing Mario Maker and then they have like their giant ass webcam over the game. And you're like, dog, I want to see Mario, man. Like, get your face out of the way. I don't want to see that. Unless you're cute, which let's face it, you probably are. So being able to slide your webcam around, I think is just a really nice way to improve the production of your stream just a little bit. We're going to be using a stream deck to move our camera around. But if you don't have a stream deck, that's okay. You can use hotkeys on your keyboard or you can use a free app like Touch Portal. I'm not gonna go into Touch Portal in this video because unfortunately the features that we need are not available in the current version of Touch Portal. But I have been told that it is coming in the next release. So when that happens, I'll do an entirely separate video. So how are we gonna do this? The first thing that we're gonna do is to right click on the scene that we wanna move our camera around and then go into filters. Now it's really important that we're adding the filters to the scene and not any sources. You wanna add it to a scene. Then we're gonna add a move source filter for each position that we want our camera in. So in my case, I wanna position my camera in each of the four corners of my screen. So I'm gonna add four move source filters. Then for each of these filters, you wanna set the source to the source that you actually wanna move, which in my case is my webcam. Then for each filter, you wanna move your camera into the position that you want it to be in, then click get transform. That's gonna save the position and the coordinates of your source to that filter. So each filter represents a different position on the screen. And then pretty much you can just scroll down to the bottom of each filter, click start, and then it's gonna move your camera into that position. So that's great, that's fantastic. Our camera's moving how we want it, but let's be real, when you're in the middle of a stream, you don't wanna click like 800 times to go down to your filters and then scroll down to start. Like, you're just not gonna do that, man. Your viewers are just gonna be like, dude, what the hell, man? What the hell are you clicking on? Are you serious? So what we're going to do is we're going to go into each of the four filters, go down to the start trigger and set it to enable and disable. What that's going to do is every time you enable the filter, it's going to move the webcam into that position and then turn the filter off immediately after. So what that means is you can get a stream deck and then tell your stream deck to toggle each of these filters and then that's going to move your camera into each of these positions. Here's the problem. A Stream Deck can't actually toggle filters in OBS. I don't know what's taking Elgato so long to add this feature, but please add that in. Elgato, I have so many ideas for things that you can add to the Stream Deck. So if you're watching out there, which let's be real, you're not. But if you are, hit me up. Anyway, there is a way that you can toggle filters on a Stream Deck, and that is by installing an extension called OBS Tools. Now, if you've never installed an extension on your Stream Deck, Go into the Stream Deck app, go into more actions, type in OBS tools, then install that extension and just follow the instructions. It's pretty straightforward. Once you've done that, there will be a new option that you can add called filter toggle. So just add that to your Stream Deck, then enter the name of your scene as the source name and then the name of the filter as the filter name. Now you're going to have to manually type this in because there's no drop down menu. So make sure when you're typing it in, Type it in exactly. But yeah, just make a button for each of the four positions for your camera, maybe throw on a custom icon for it, and then bam, you're pretty much done. Just keep in mind, you are gonna have to hit the button on your stream deck twice to activate the filter. That's not a problem with the move transition plugin. That's a problem with the OBS tool extension. That's just how it works. The last animation we're gonna be doing is the dramatic zoom. This is one I added as a channel point reward to my stream and everybody has just been blasting it. Wait, nobody do it first. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. 
The way I did this is I stuffed my camera into its own nested scene. And the reason why I did this is because I want the dramatic zoom effect to work no matter what scene I'm on. If you don't know what a nested scene is, go watch my other video, but this is one of the scenarios where this makes sense. Anyway, what you should have is a blank scene that has nothing in it except for one source, and that is your webcam. You want to go into the filters for that scene and add just one move source filter. For this move source filter, you want to stretch your webcam so it's super zoomed in on your face and then click on get transform. And then same as before, set the start trigger to enable and disable. But this time we're going to set the next move to reverse. Basically what this does is it runs the animation and then immediately reverses that action. So if you want to test what this does, right click on your camera and then reset the transform so it's back to its normal size and then enable the filter. And what you'll notice is it'll zoom into your face and then immediately zoom out. But this isn't exactly what we want. What we want is for the camera to zoom in on our face, hold it for half a second, then zoom out. So that's really simple. All you have to do is change the end delay to 500 milliseconds and then try the filter again and then it'll zoom into your face, hold it, and then zoom out. It's really simple, but you can do the same thing as before. Just bind this filter to your stream deck and then you got your dramatic zoom. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Three different ways that you can animate your stream. Now, one thing I think would be super cool with this is if you could do these sorts of animations, but do it in like a 3D space. Like for example, there's a plugin called Stream Effects that allows you to pan and tilt your camera. I think it would be super cool if you could do like this animated tilt effect. Well, guess what? I actually know how to do that, but I'm not gonna tell you how to do it until you guys give me a tier four sub on my Twitch stream. I stream four nights a week. We talk about this kind of stuff all the time. So come hang out. It's loads of fun, especially when you guys give me money. You guys can also join the Discord, come share your creations or, you know, just hang out. I promise it's great. All right, video's over. What are you still doing here? Get out of here, man. Go watch one of my other videos. <laughs> Unbelievable. Seriously, go watch one of my other videos.